Hello everyone and welcome back to the part 2 where we'll discuss what is a generator function in the quest to create a custom data generator in Python for training different kind of deep learning models. So let's get started. And yeah, in this first part we'll discuss what a generator function is and what is the difference between yield and return. So let's assume this scenario, you and your friends go to a restaurant and you order, you know, number of foods. So this is waiter, waiter A, he comes, like he takes all your order all at once and serves it at the table. Now this will obviously occupy a lot of space in your table and it will be very difficult for you to eat. So what he did, he gets your order all at once, it uh, fill up your space and yeah, you're struggling to eat. And take this example, waiter number two, and you order uh, again the same stuff. But what she does, instead of getting everything at once, she'll give you order one by one. She remembers which order was served. Like first of all, she'll give you the starters. Then she'll come and give you the uh, main course. Then she'll come and give you the dessert. So in this way, your table is not filled up and you are getting everything in a sequence. So what this waiter does is she gets your order in sequence one by one. Now the first waiter which gets everything all at once and that occupies space that is your normal python function where you uh, uh, you pass something to the function and the function return you everything at once that's your normal python function and the waiter too which is she sees a generator function because you pass the input but instead of giving you everything all at once she gives you in a sequence one by one as you request okay so this is much a cleaner way clear in the sense that it won't occupy much space in your memory. Now once we understood through this example the difference between normal Python function and a generator function, now let's get technical. So let's take this example where we have to perform squaring operation. So this is a normal Python function, the first block, and this is a generator function for the same, uh, same operation. So we have uh, input data, we'll pass it. Now what a uh, normal Python function, it will create a list and then it will loop over every sample, it will do the operation of squaring, and it will append it to list, and then it will return you the list. So, when you print output, you get all your output all at once. And this is your generator function, which again takes your sequence of input, it performs the operation, but it will not return you result all at once, it will return you one by one. And now, in order to uh, understand it better what I mean, let me show you through a code, okay? So this is my code and this is the same square generator, uh, sorry, square function. This is a normal function. So I'll just run this and you can see this is my output window. Okay. And now this is my input data. I just define this input data and I feed this input data to the function. And when I print the result, you will see that I have got all my output all at once of squared input. Now let's create a generator function square generator and here also it's looping over every sample but it's not storing any result anywhere it's doing the computation and giving you the result uh, one by one and this is your input data again okay and now when you call your uh, square generator function with the input data and when you print it it won't give you the results instead it will say that square gen is your generator object okay and this generator object, how you can access it is through Python inbuilt iterator called next. So when you do a next, it will take uh, it, will, it will take the output of the first and then when you do next, then, then the next output, then the next and so on. So let's see. So if I call a square number next and print result, it will give you the first result, which is one square of one is one. And if I call it again, it will give you four, as you can see here. So it's not giving you everything at once, not occupying your memory. It's giving one by one. Nine and then 16, as you can see here, and then 25 and then 36. And if I call it again, then it will throw some error because there are no elements in this to return you any output, okay? So now in order to again, uh, trying to access it since it has, you know, uh, uh, given you all the result, you need to reinitialize it. And one way to use it in your code is uh, you can loop over the length of your input data. And in that sense, you can get all your output one by one. So in this loop, just imagine you're getting some input from this generator function and this input you're feeding to a network, you're doing the operation and you're getting the output. 
and it's it's very memory efficient because as the list it does not uh, create a list to store your outputs it just return you on the go now once you've seen the code i hope you got some idea now let's see the difference between these two function what what makes it different so one you would have noticed here is in normal uh, Python function, you will have a return to return the results, and in generator functions, you will have a yield to return your results. Okay, so now let's define this generator function officially. So a generator function is defined like a normal function, but whatever it needs, sorry, I'll just need a pen maybe. I'm not able to. Oh, how can I get? Okay, forget it. So it's defined like a normal function, but whenever it needs to generate a value, it does so with yield keyword rather than return, as we saw here. Okay, if the body of a uh, defined de function definition it contains a yield, the function automatically becomes a generator function in the Python. So generator are functions that yield result, and then they will suspend the operation and then resume the operation from there. So as we saw when we are doing next, it's not taking everything from fresh. Like when you do in a function. When you call the function again, it will do everything from scratch, all the operation. Here, it gives the output for the first sample, and then for the second, and third, and so on. It's suspended, and the resume oper and it resumed operation from there. Okay. So again, uh, let's see some more differences. So return sends a specified value back to its caller, whereas yield can produce a sequence of values, as we saw. Return basically exits from a function with a value, and the local values within it is destroyed. Whereas yield is sort of exiting from the function, but it remembers the state when it exists. So as you saw uh, in, in the example code, we, it was uh, you know remembering where it stopped and giving the next output. When you do the next from your function, it will resume from the point. Okay, the yield statement suspends the function execution and sends a value back to the caller, but retains enough state to enable the function to resume where it left off. Okay, when when it, it's the same thing. So in case of uh, normal function, it it when you call once and then it, it gives you output and it, it's destroyed when you call again it's everything from scratch in uh, generator function there's a yield keyword which has some memory of where it executed and it start execution after that okay so we should use yield when we want to iterate over a sequence but don't want to store the entire sequence in the memory okay and uh, this this is a video from Korish Cory Sheffer who explains this generator function very nicely so you can go and uh, watch that and I'll, I'll post the link and these are two document uh, two blogs from geeks for geeks where they explain the difference between key uh, word yield and return okay so that's it from this video so we saw what a generator function is and what's the difference between the yield and the return and in the next video we'll write a generator function to read uh, data for an image classifier in Keras but again I'm just using Keras here but writing the data generator function is, is in Python it's independent of a training so only for showing the training I'll be using Keras but you can create this data generator and train it in any library so this example we'll be taking is this network where we'll feed single input and the model has to predict a classifier so that's it from this video I hope you got some uh, you got idea what a generator function is and in the next video we'll be doing this stuff so till then uh, keep learning and keep exploring neurons bye